Hi guys, I'm now in a hotel room and uh, I'm just doing this video to support uh, something Chris recently said about rumble strips. Basically, he was talking about how rumble strips, instead of um, helping, you know, keeping us safe on, da on certain dangerous stretches of road, actually makes, make things worse in, in certain occasions. Okay, so um, I'm going to, uh, the reason why I'm doing this here is that I want to provide you guys with a scientific explanation to back my buddy up. So before that, okay, let's start with a simple explanation of the physics involved. We talk about friction. So let's say like you have an object you're rubbing against a surface. Okay, so there is friction between these two objects, all right? And how much frictional force is there between these, uh, between the surface of the table and this box here, it's really, it is, a, it is calculated by um, the coefficient of friction, all right? This, uh, this, this little constant called the coefficient of friction multiplied by, um, by what they call the normal reaction force of the between these two two between these two objects. So in simple terms, right, the reaction the normal reaction force is basically the force that is preventing this box from crashing through the table or rather the, the, the force of the table holding this box up. Okay, in in if you uh, to approximate it, all right, uh, all right, or another way of equating it the normal reaction force acting on this box from the table is basically the table exerting a force to hold the weight of this box and that is equal to the weight of this box. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, the, the formula is spelled F is equals to mu N if you, if you, if you study this in, you know, what, A-level physics or form 5 SPM physics. Now, the coefficient of friction Okay, is the is the that is the um, the multiplier that determines how 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 uh, what is the the level of friction between the surfaces. Okay, so let's say like now I add another another material. Let's say like I put put this piece of paper here. All right, so the coefficient of friction between this box and this paper versus this box and the table are different. The coefficient of friction solely is a function between the properties of these two surfaces, how rough or how smooth they are relative to each other. So if you were to translate this into tires, all right, um, when, your, when your tire is, is, is moving, on a straight line, okay. When your car is moving with your tire uh, on your uh, with your tires, um, there are there are two frictional forces at work. There are there's the lateral forces. That is the one that keeps your car going straight because that's the sideways um, uh, frictional force. Then there's also the the what you call it, uh, the longitudinal frictional force. That is the the force that comes into play with you know your fuel efficiency, your acceleration, and all that. And it's all a it is all determined, all right, in simplistic terms by the coefficient of friction multiplied by the weight of the car. Okay, are you still following me? I, I think you're still following me. All right, so um, there you have it. In simple terms, let's say like when you are driving on a road, okay, when you're driving on the road, your car has a certain, th there's a certain co level of coefficient of friction between your tires and the road below. Now, if you were to suddenly change, if, you, if the surface of the road were to suddenly change to a different material, a different level of smoothness, the coefficient of friction accordingly changes. All right? And this is happens when, say, you drive from tar, suddenly the road becomes cement, become brick pavements, it changes. The coefficient of friction changes, and hence, the level of your grip changes. So even if let's say like when you say, when you throw water, when you throw oil on the road, 
the coefficient of friction between your tires and the surface changes and that means it changes the grip levels that you have available and it changes the handling characteristics of your car so when in Chris's are in in support of Chris's argument when you paint rumble strips over the road surface what you have is you have this is a this is the road okay this is the road with a certain constant coefficient of friction certain constant grip level and you put rumble strip pa 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 you are introducing strips whereby there is a change in the grip levels available to your tires okay so on a straight line that is okay but when you are cornering when you are taking a corner your car is effectively resting on the sideways friction between of your tires and the road so if the grip level if that force if that frictional force changes what it means is that it upsets the balance of your vehicle in the case of a car that can result in the car you know wobbling a bit going a bit out of control but in the case of a bike where you know you are sitting on just two wheels the effect could be disastrous and it multiplies um, in rainy conditions because usually when rumble rumble strips the surface is smooth and when it when it rains the difference in roughness between the tar tarmac and the rumble strips actually go you know even even greater which is more dangerous okay so um that is just one aspect of it the other aspect let me illustrate with this when you're if you are talking about a thick rumble strip you are also dealing with a slight change in elevation so what happens is when there's that this change in elevation you know your 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 tire is rolling over and suddenly when it hits the rumble strip it is pushed up it is lifted up to to know to go over the rumble strip and then once your tire passes this point there is this moment where your tire brief moment where your tire loses contact with the surface okay so and you and as we all know the the, the the common argument the four contact patches of your the, the four contact patches of your tires two in the case of motorcycles they are the only points where your vehicle touches the road so if if this four contact points or two contact points are compromised it it severely affects your vehicle's ability to handle effectively and and there is one more point to be made besides lateral grip it also affects your longitudinal grip and that what that means is that it actually affects the effectiveness of your braking so imagine as your car is coming from this way you are applying braking force your tires are are acting you know to scrub off the speed you know to, to reduce the speed of your car all right based on the 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 uh, what you call that the friction between your tire and the, and the tarmac and suddenly it hits this rumble strip it changes the rate of your vehicle deceleration and and, and you throw that to the fact that you know if, if that rumble strip is deployed over a corner you are your, your your vehicle suddenly there is a spike in its deceleration curve both longitudinally and laterally and that translate to a loss in control so all i mean i've i've made another uh, another one another video of this and i am making this again making this argument again okay this real this whole video is to explain to you guys in a scientific man in a very scientific manner why rumble strips you know going downhill going around the bends actually do more harm than good